it's a strange thing. I've always said that the best part about being a photographer is getting to ride the motorcycle. So why do I so rarely make videos with a motorcycle in them? <clears throat> Sorry about the squeaky voice, two viewers. I've got a bit of a cold. Not man flu, I don't do man flu. So I thought, look, the sun's shining, let's go out, let's go and take some pictures of a motorbike. Let's do a little bit of how to photograph a motorcycle. Because I also know some of you guys ride bikes yourselves. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be looking at things that work, things that don't work, ways of going about things, camera angles. I might show you a few ideas of how we're going to do this with a phone. I will also take a couple of these shots, these raw files, we'll have a look at them at the end in Lightroom and we'll go through the post-production of maybe one or two of them. So that's what you can expect. So first of all, let's have a little look at how would we take a picture? What do people do? Now, isn't that strange? My camera was there on a lobster pot. How did that happen? So, I'm just going to dump this over here out the way. So, what do we do? It's a very natural thing to think, okay, let's go somewhere nice, somewhere pretty. Let's have a background, lobster pots. That would make a great background. Will it? That's a question to ask yourself. Let's have a little look. Somewhere in my pocket, I've got a pair of glasses, which I should have got ready sooner. Here we go. Let's have a little look and see how that works. Let's just come back over here a bit, guys, and see. Now, I'll put my little video camera on. And as you can probably see straight away, that's just kind of messy, isn't it? What else? We've got my shadow going on down the bottom there, haven't we? So we need to find an angle where the shadow isn't there. Well, if we move to our left a bit and we come around this way, look, that shadow is starting to disappear. So that's better, but it's not a very interesting picture, is it? It's obvious. I'm going to take it just quickly so we can show you. Look, the bike is lost against the background. We're looking at the bike from the same angle at which we nearly always view a motorcycle from. And when we look at something in a photo that's the same as the way we always see it, your brain goes, why are you boring me? This is just dull and uninteresting. So we need to find a different way of doing it. That background doesn't work. The bike is lost in it. So what about that background over there? Why don't I move the bike and then we'll see what that looks like. That's better, isn't it? Now, there is debate about what is the best angle to put a motorcycle. Is it better on the centre stand? Is it better on the side stand? Is it better leaning towards or away? That one is a choice for you because it's your bike. How do you like to see it? Things I know don't work very well is, again, looking at things from the angle at which we normally see it. So let's go back over here a bit, guys. Let's just ease ourselves back. By the way, your camera person today is Angie. She's never done this before. I think she's doing an awesome job. What you can't see is every now and then she's going because she thinks she's got it wrong. Chill, Angie, you're doing well. So look, if I stand here and take that shot without thinking too much, it's okay, isn't it? But you know, look at it. There's things that are a bit wonky. There's things that are not great. Bikes, I think, often look really good if you look at them from tank level, you know, put your eyes at tank level. Let's try that. Let's just go a little lower. I'm just going to bend my knees. So I'm looking at the bike from roughly tank level. You see, that looks quite nice. We've got quite nice light. It's sort of sliding in and coming up the side of the bike. I'm currently shooting on an 18 millimeter lens. So I think what would be good would be to extend that lens a bit because we're going to narrow the field of view. We're going to bring the background in a bit and I think it will make us concentrate more on the bike. So we're going to move further away from the bike. We're going this way. Angie's going to do her walking backwards thing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> right, let me find the right angle. It's probably here. Yes, that's filling the frame just nicely. Let me put some of my video on. I can show you. Right, that's kind of filling the frame nicely. If 
If I bend my knees, sorry about the snuffling guys, I've got a little bit of a cold. Now look, as we look at it from this angle, that's pretty good. It's a nice angle for the bike. We've got a bit of a background going on, which is slightly annoying, but it's not too bad. Let's take the picture. Line it all up. Now, what's my exposure? This is a pretty easy exposure to do because the light's coming in from the side, 200 ISO. I'm using a wide aperture of f4.5 because I want to try and make the background as soft as possible. This isn't anything fancy, this lens. It's the bog standard 18 to 55 that comes with the camera. It's my go-to lens. I just love it. So, there we go. That's a nice shot. It looks pretty good. But it could be better. I don't like the line of the pontoon going through behind the bike. Something that works really well when photographing a whoops, motorcycle, and I've had nothing to drink this morning, is getting down low with a wide angle lens. That can work really, really well. So I'm going to bring my lens in as short as it'll go to the 18 and get closer to the bike. Then we can lose those pontoons and we've just got the blue sky. We've also got a red bike, blue sky, blue and red best mates they work well together so we're going to go a little closer these are things you can do try things move around try different stuff but also by shooting a bike from a low angle it looks powerful it makes it kind of dominant now i want to be careful i don't want that pole over there interfering with my shot too much that's better look i'm going to go a little closer still shoot along from this angle here here we go too close See how you just have to jiggle around? I like a little bit of space around my bike. I'm gonna just, let me show you in the video. Look, that's very wide. I'm just gonna zoom in a tiny bit because I think it'll look nicer. I'm gonna move back a bit. You just kind of do this little dance of composition to find the place where the shot works. That's better. You see, too wide, in a bit. That's nice and tight. The bike looks strong and powerful. I don't like that pole. Look, it's overlapping the back of the bike. If I move the camera, that's better, isn't it? Click, we'll take that shot. Oh, I apologize for the snuffles. It's not good, is it? It's not big, it's not funny, it's not clever. That's quite a nice shot. But did you notice what's on the ground? Puddles. What does puddles mean? Water. What does water mean? The photographer's friend means reflections. Let's get that lens wide again. Go back to the 18 millimeters, moving close because there's going to be a reflection if we get the camera down really close to the water. Watch. No, we've got a great little reflection going on down here in this puddle. Now I'm too close, aren't I? The lens is as wide as it'll go. There we go. I backed it out. That's as far as it'll go. I've got to back out more myself until I find the place where I've got good reflection, bit of sky, bit of bike, bit of puddle, bit of puddle action. And that's pretty good just there. So once more, we don't need to see the whole bike in the, in the puddle, but you know, as you find different puddles, so you find different puddle attributes with reflections. I've got an idea. It's Sunday. Somewhere near you, there is probably an industrial estate rather than a pretty marina. And those of you who are going, that's all very well, Mike, pretty marina, I don't have a pretty marina where I live. You're a biker. Get on your bike, go for a ride. Don't be a wuss. Let's go find somewhere else to see what we can do. There must be an industrial park somewhere near where you live and they're great on a Sunday because there's nobody here. We've got all this cool stuff. I like this, I don't know what you call it, I think you Americans call it aluminium siding on this building. There's a little bit of light up in the far corner. With a little bit of cloud, the sun's gone in, which is a shame because I wanted to do something else. It's gone in while I was faffing about. But look, we've got quite a moody sky. Let's see what happens here. These are the sort of things that can make your bike look really good. Let's roll a bit of my video. So, look, we've got a bit of that sky. We've got a bit of that aluminium hoarding up on the side there. And I think if we go down a bit lower, we can use the buildings on either side. That looks quite cool, doesn't it? Look, you can see the shot coming together. I like this lower angle from about here. 
that I quite like. Let's do that shot. I think that looks nice. Now we have got a very, very bright sky, haven't we? We can try and get the exposure right. I'm going to suggest bracketing. If you set your camera onto bracket mode, find the exposure in the middle, which is kind of like where the histogram has got shadow detail and where the histogram has got some highlight detail. Find those two exposures and then find the one in the middle. Set that and then tell your camera to bracket two stops either side. If you don't know what on earth I'm talking about, then go and have a look at my Ultimate Beginners course because that will explain what I'm talking about, about getting your exposure and how to use your histogram. I'm sorry, I can't go into that now. Awesome, the sun's coming out, that's what I want. I've got my camera in bracket mode. I'm gonna use not particularly small aperture, although I might because we've got a little bit of sun going on. I'm gonna go for about, I can see, I just looked at the sun, F11, 200 ISO. That's giving me a shutter speed of oh, 800 to a thousandth of a second, which is cool. Let me see if I can get that shot with that little bit of brightness going on in the sky behind the sun. I need to just brighten up my shot a bit. Where was it? It was here, wasn't it? Level up the camera, there we go. So we've got an HDR, three shots, boom, boom, boom. Looking at that, it needs to be brighter. Always check your shots while you're there because you've got a chance to change it. My darkest of the three is just too dark. So I'm going to set an exposure, probably another stop higher as my starting point to make sure we're going to capture it. I can't like that light behind the clouds. Where was I? Bend my knees a bit. I'm going at about tank level here, using the buildings on either side to, there we go. We got cloud detail in the first, we got a little bit of mid-tone detail going on in the second, and then we got some shadow in the third. They'll blend beautifully. I kind of like that shot. Let's go around the corner. Let's go around here into the shade to see what it looks like. Always experiment. You know what I'm like. Let's try different things. As you probably gathered, I quite like the bike on its side stand, and I quite like the three-quarter look. You know, the angle that the bike's at, it just pleases me. You may like something different. Let's move back a bit. Let's see how that looks. Now I know there's cars and things going on. Keep going, keep going guys, keep going. Here we go, about there. I put my lens to 55 millimeters. I am gonna line up my shot and see what it looks like. I don't think I need to bracket. I'm gonna do a quick test. Let's see, but I just like the lines. I kind of like that. Let's use a wide aperture, because I don't want to have too much sharpness front to back. Now, let me show you in my video. Look, looking at it from normal height, let's darken that shot down a little if I can. There we go. It's okay, but as we come lower, it's getting better. Now, you see that car? I think I can hide it behind the clocks and the headlight. There, look, you see, that is much better already. I think that looks quite good. I quite like the industrial look. So let's find our exposure. Put the camera onto photo mode. Here we go, line up our shot. I think I'll brighten it up just a touch. Somewhere around there, I like the dumpster to the left. I like the pipes. A little higher, I went too low and yeah, I kind of like that. Not sure. I'll tell more when we get into the office. I'm going to have a look and see what we could do. Maybe with some close-up, little details, bits and pieces of bike, you know. Because we've got this lovely, clear, blank aluminium going on behind. Oh, just on over there, there's a, look. There's one of those signs, look. Someone trying to open an umbrella on a windy day. I just kind of like that, just poking up there. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat. Let's just put that there, because I just think it'll look quite cool in the picture. I don't know, you know, let's fool around. Let's try things, see what works. I'm coming back a bit. I think I may have got it too close, but... <laughs> We're going back. We're going back, 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 back. I want a bit of negative space in this. I quite like the door. I like the Bentley way. I like the bike. I like the men at work sign. I'm just going to go with that. I like negative space. You probably know me well. I'm a negative space junkie. 
let's hope a truck doesn't come steaming around the corner and flatten my bike. I think that's really boring. I think that was really boring. I'm gonna try something else from a little closer. Let's come in close, let's lose the Bentley way. I think I've got the sign in the wrong place. I'm gonna ignore the sign because I'm doing a video with you guys. Let's do down low because look, we've got a very great dynamic going on with this building, going into the distance. Bit of video time. Look, wide angle, look at that dynamic. See how the building is going off into the distance like that. We've got the bike here. I've got the lens short on 18 millimeters and that's kind of stretching the bike this way a little bit. It looks quite nice. I rather like it. I much prefer it to the sign. That just was rubbish. Okay, so let me get my focus point on the bike. Check my exposure. Keep an eye on that histogram. I rather like that. I think that's a pretty cool shot. Just like that. The only thing, look, in looking at the picture, can you see there's that blue one-way arrow? It's just sitting under the mirror. How painfully annoying is that? How can we hide it? I reckon we can hide it uh, just moving a little bit. Look, now if I've just done that tiny movement and now I've hidden that blue arrow behind the front brake master cylinder and you don't notice it at all. You're very close, aren't you? This is quite nice. <laughs> Let's have a little look and see what else we can find. I'm gonna have a wander around, see if we can find another shot somewhere. I just had a poke about in that dumpster skip over there and I found a little piece of wood because what's going through my mind is a bit of environmental motorcycle portraiture. I love the little, you know, smoko area down here under the cover, the 130, the aluminium, this kind of stuff. There's these lines on the ground, which I think they might get kind of interesting. Excuse me, snuffling. But it's better that than having a shiny, glistening beard. And I just thought, We'll shoot the bike from this side instead of the other. I like the bike leaning toward. I find it more inviting. You may not, you know, so let's try things out. I found this in the skip over there because I want to put it under the stand and just lift the bike up a tiny bit. I think it's better than having it lean away. I don't want to put it on the center stand. I think that's too rigid, too kind of like upright. Where do I want the bike? I reckon somewhere about here. I'm thinking bike here. Smoko area, sign, aluminium. It's gonna be quite small, negative space in the shot. Let's pop that there. We can always move things around as we go. Put that back on there. Here we are. Now I'm doing this with a cruiser. You know, my Thunderbird. And this is the cruisy Thunderbird. But it doesn't matter. Same sort of thing works with a sports bike. Custom, you know, go out, play around with these things. The other thing I've just realized is I promised I'd do some with a phone and I haven't because I've been getting carried away because I've got a time constraint because the weather's changing. But trust me, you can do it with a phone and I'll do this one with a phone. So I'm gonna roll a bit of my video and show you roughly what I'm thinking. I think it's coming together already, isn't it? See, that's pretty close to it already, isn't it? We've got, I'm gonna move this way a bit. So we've got this, this line in the middle here coming up through there. I like the sign up there. I like the smoko area, the little cover. I like the bike, but I don't like that bit of crash barrier, that armco running through the middle. So how do we do with it? Composition. It's a function of arms and legs and hands and feet and knees, isn't it? So let's bend those knees. Look, the armco is going behind the tank. I think it's about there. This is the delicately posed photographer squat. I just snuck in the focal length a bit, it's there. So, put the camera back into single shot mode. Think this through. What kind of aperture do you need? There's hardly any depth of field, is there? Focus on the bike, because the bike is the subject. If you've got a wide aperture, it might make the background a little softer, can't hurt. But I'm gonna go for a middling aperture myself. I'm gonna go somewhere around the, I don't know, F7, something like that. It's a good aperture, things perform well. 200 ISO, that's gonna give me 125th of a second shutter speed with a focal length of about 20 millimeters. Therefore, I'm not gonna get camera shake. 
Again, if you know what I'm talking about with these things, go and have a look at my Ultimate Beginners course because I'll take you through step by step. But all of that meant I can't do it all in one YouTube video. So here we go, the camera's ready. My histogram says the exposure's about right. Bend those knees, do the photographer crouch, stick your ass out, look good in public with Mike Brown. Here we go. I kind of like that shot. I kind of like that. I like the graphic nature of it. I like the straight lines. We'll look more at it when we go into the office. While we're here, I think it might be worth exploring some close-ups, some little angles, little bits of bike, which might look cool and sexy, little shiny bits, because we've got quite a good background. What have we got? I'm gonna make the lens wide. Ooh, 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 I'm just seeing some sky that I like, some cool sky action. Let me show you what I just saw. I was here, wasn't I, looking at the bike like that. And then as I came back, I went, oh, look at that sky, look at that shape. I kind of like that. That shot in itself, I quite like it. A bit of bike and the building and the sky. And oh, let's take it quickly. You see, as you explore shots, you start to find things that work. The key here is to explore different things. We haven't got the whole biking shot, but I really like that shot. I'm gonna do another HDR bracket. Because it's a tricky exposure, the light's changing, I don't wanna lose the moment, so I'm just gonna do it and then, cool, we'll look at that when we get back in the office. I've got 18 millimeters of lens going on there. We don't need to see the whole bike to know the bike's there. What does it look like from this side? These are the questions to ask yourself. What does it look like from here, from there, from different angles? That's looking pretty good. I'm coming down low. I rather like that. I think that could be quite an interesting shot. Oh, I do like that. Isn't it funny? The more you explore, the more you investigate, the more you find. Seek and you shall find, and it is so true. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna ride back to the office. We'll pop a few of these into Lightroom. Um, I promised I would take a pitch with my phone. <sighs> Having a cold and being a scatterbrained, you know what. Little comedy moment for you there while I drop the microphone. I don't know where my phone is, I've no idea. Where am I, how did I get here? This really is probably one of the messiest videos I've ever made. By all means, comment below. Do you think this is the messiest video Brown has ever made? Camera. Oh, here comes the rain. Right, quick, wang that over there because we don't want it. Photo mode. Right, let's do that shot we did earlier. Let's look for it. You see, you don't have to do this. I'm even going to put video through my phone so you can watch. No, we just have to move around. We've got to find the place where we get the you know, the number, the 130. Let's go to the right a bit. There we go. We can just bend our knees a bit. And there you go. There is our shot. Now, I've left my camera on the tarmac there, which is pretty silly because it's going to be in this shot. But I just wanted to show you, you don't need anything fancy. Annoyingly, this phone, the focal length changes between video and photo there we go phone photo just to prove it is possible see you guys back in the office